I mean, this is exactly what uh, OpenAI and Deep, uh, DeepMind at Google are. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but there's something called reinforcement learning in artificial intelligence where yeah. you have like they've done it for like sumo wrestling. You have oh, really? you have like you have these two stick figures that don't even know how to get up at first, and they figure out how to stand on their two feet, mm. and then they figure out how to push the other person off of the the, the pedestal. Wait, whatever. so but what about like uh, when you look at the the Boston Dynamics? Sometimes they have trouble with like jumping and balancing and the other stuff. So yeah. are they are they doing that same program or no? No, no, no. This it's different. The, uh, the, the, uh, everything Boston Dynamics is doing uh, is hard coded. So it's not um, it's not learning the all the sophisticated movements and strategies like high level strategies of movement. That's all something that Boston Dynamics does not do. And if it does it like the parkour stuff, that's all hard coded. In. Oh, interesting. Like, the people like project and think like these robots have like discovered like how to move in sophisticated ways they haven't. It's well, that's what when you and John were talking about the the grappling robot. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I was I was obsessing about in my head is that with the chess, right? If a chess piece moves, right, uh, the horse can move like an L, right? It can only move like an L. It doesn't matter if it moves at two meters per second or seven meters per second. It can only it can only move there, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, like a single leg, I can shoot a single leg with many different velocities. Mm -hmm. I can shoot at different angles. I can shoot with different amounts of force. Right, I can shoot with my my head up versus my head. I mean, right, all these things are going to matter. If we're talking about a, a human being defending the single leg, all of those things are going to matter, and and that's where human beings are uh, who wrestle are calculating those things subconsciously. They're obviously not consciously calculating in their head. Oh, the the force is coming at me at this, so I need to do right. that. Right, they're just doing it it's because. Feel. But see, the the thing is, so you would absolutely, if you're doing a robot that you're wrestling, you're going to have to constrain the speed at which it moves and the power that it's able to uh, yes. deliver. So that presumably there'll be the limitation. So then it'll be just the same exactly as a human. But then, but, it's, but it's even so, if we go human max force, right? Jordan Bros double max force, mm -hmm. right? That's the highest. That's the highest we get, and then we go down from there. Um, <laughs> even even with even within that. It's like yeah. sometimes I can shoot a single leg with a maximum force of I don't we'll just say we'll say twenty is a number, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I shoot it at twenty because I feel sometimes I shoot at fifteen, sometimes I shoot it at twelve, right? Because mm -hmm. you you feel something in oh, your yeah. opponent that makes you do it differently. Yeah. So they would have to learn how and, and then, you know, all of these different things. And sometimes maybe I clamp a little harder. So the the robot would have to learn all of these different incoming inputs to the system and mm -hmm. then create this reaction. Oh no 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 one hundred percent. So this would be all continuous. Like yeah. Uh, so unlike chess, it would not. It's just chess is discrete. There's it's uh, one then the you move. It's it's a, it's a very specific set of moves. No, yeah. here you would. Those are all variables you control, and they're continuous variables. So the speed, the force. There's actuators. So there's all these joints, right? That, yeah. That you can move. I mean, it's just an optimization problem. It's kind of fat. It's, it was fascinating. So I've been fascinated thinking about it since you guys talked about it. I, it was a long time ago. I listened to it probably three, three to four weeks ago. And I've <laughs> kind of been like obsessing about it ever since. Be well, yeah, it just changes when. Um, so unlike boxing, for example, or striking, it, it, you know, once you grab a hold of somebody, it it change. You're now one body, mm -hmm. right? So it's, yeah. it's very complicated. It's not just shooting a a double leg without like maybe doing like like faking a double leg and then shooting the double leg that's very doable with robotics but mm -hmm. then like doing a clinch and from there doing like a russian tie like mm -hmm. that yeah I, that, that's uh i think it's way harder than people realize in terms of how many things are involved like the force of the grip the leverage you're providing with all the different parts of the shoulder and the arm and the torso, the twist, how much of your weight are you allocating, like leaning on the other person, yeah. like taking weight off of one of your legs and the other leg, all of that. I, I think that's the really interesting thing about humans is we're able to do all of this calculation. Subconsciously. Yeah, subconsciously. Yeah, and that's what I've been thinking about since we, uh, it's like how many things, even these high school athletes who are like getting medium good, are subconsciously thinking about all the time or not even not even thinking about sorry, reacting to um but then even like for me i'm you know i'm a few orders of magnitude better than some of these kids that play and so when i when i go like super hard it's like 
I can feel their weight moving in the wrong direction. And so for me to off balance them or trip them or whatever, is kind of easy sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because they're not feeling it the right way, right? Or their timing's just a little bit off or the way they're grabbing the hip, maybe they should be up a little higher, right? Mm -hmm. These really small things. Um, yeah, I think that's all easy to take advantage of for a robot. It's just, there's so many things. The, the big problem is ethically, I don't know how many people are willing to train with a robot because you're gonna get hurt. Well, couldn't you make a robot train with a robot or no? Yes, but then it's expensive. So, because <laughs> they're gonna put get... the padding on that thing. I know, but the, but then it's not, you know, it it it's <laughs> the, then uh, the, you're not get, capturing the full. Why can't you put like some rubber coating on them? Right? You know, something to that effect. You could. I mean, the, you could. Yeah, you could. I mean, you're talking about robots that are, so these are humanoid robots. So we're talking about $500,000 million robots. Mm -hmm. So you would have to be motivated. <laughs> spend a lot of money. To spend a lot of money because you have to have them wrestle for like a lot. To get better. Yeah, to get better. Yeah. And then the the open question is how, long does it take to get good enough to beat a human uh <laughs> i i don't i don't think i don't think we understand i don't know i don't think you understand how hard wrestling is yeah like is it a really hard problem like what's harder chess or wrestling wrestling by far not even close that's yeah that's the sense so because there's an infinite amount of moves right uh and possibilities so once i shoot the single leg now you have X amount of choices. Once you make your choice, now I have a choice. X amount of choices. Now, I, now you have X amount of choices on the defense, and we can just keep going back and forth, right? And this number becomes. Yeah, but the same happens with chess. Correct, but then in wrestling, you have to make these movements in very instantaneously, right? Because if I shoot a single, like I'm not going to wait and say, "What's your defense?" Yeah, right. You have to make instantaneously, and then also again, based on the force and the vectors and and the angles, you have to calculate that and adjust. So really. You know, if you're saying, well, I can shoot a single leg, it's not like moving the chest, it's not one move, right? It's if you want to talk about different forces and stuff, it, it could be hundreds or thousands of different moves based on how hard I shoot it, the angle, the direction, all of those things. Yeah, but wait a minute. So robots can do this kind of stuff really fast. You, what I, People probably know the physiology of this, but it's the, the reaction speed for a human is maybe 100 milliseconds, something like that. I don't okay. know, from sensation to, to, to like from, the the signal traveling up your to your brain and down. Okay. I don't know what that number is, but uh, robots certainly could do it way faster. It you would actually have to like constrain the speed. Well, so the robots are already killing the chess people, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, theoretically they could eventually beat wrestlers. But you asked what was hard wrestling or chess. Yeah, and I think wrestling is because of the time component in it, and then the and and the physicality of. You know, is it this force or that force? You know, because if if I'm going to say say we're in a seatbelt side by side, right, a wrestling seatbelt, not in jujitsu, based on the pressure you're giving me, I might do a bunch of different things, right? And so, like to an untrained eye, they might both look like the same thing from you. To a trained feel, it's like, well, in one case, it's really evident I should go this way; in another case, it's really evident I should go that way. So you the know? other thing to consider, just like with chess, the AI systems. So human versus human play a certain way together. They actually haven't considered a really large number of strategies that AI systems discover. So one possibility with a robot, they'll discover certain ties and certain takedowns. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that like will dominate no matter what the human does. You think that, so you think there's that, so this, I mean, this what I'm talking about with the wrestling so fun is there's, even after 80, 90 years, there's this continuous yeah. evolution. Yeah. So you There'll think- be some like low have, single type thing, like John Smith type of situation. Well, like just, a down block go behind is something that has really, I would say really in the last five-ish years has really been evolved. What's a go behind? Down block go behind. So when you shoot, well, they, they just head inside or head outside matters, but there's one for both. You shoot at me, essentially. I take my leg, like, boom. And then, so that was kind of in existence when I was in college, right? You down block them and you stop, but usually you hit on this side of their head, right? Mm -hmm. And now immediately as you shoot, I attack that shoulder and then I start hitting a go behind mm -hmm. on you, right? And so like, that in in its current incarnation, it absolutely wasn't around. When I was in college. I would say it probably became popular I don't know, five to seven years ago. So yeah, there's these big things that are happening. 
It, now, now I really want a robot because I want to be ahead of the game. I want to know like exactly. what I'm missing. I mean, one interesting thing you have with Alpha Zero that plays chess is um, it sacrifices pieces much more than humans do. So it'll give you a piece, mm. and not only does it give you a piece, it will wait a bunch of moves before it makes you pay. So because it knows that that's better for the long yeah, term. Long term. So like humans rarely sacrifice without getting the piece back like two or three moves after uh alpha zero can wait like five moves so wow. so basically you'll have you potentially with wrestling you might have a a robot that like puts itself in bad positions but in a certain kind of way that that will actually lures the opponent in out. to trap the <laughs> exactly what my style is based on <laughs> <laughs> well, you basically narrow one one uh, thing to do is you narrow the set of choices you put yourself in a bad position but it narrows the set of choices for them because they're not used to it yeah they're not used to it and and then you you drag them into uh into Disgusting. your yeah so but there's also the problem is there's mechanical issues like it's actually just difficult to build robots that uh are able to sense because we have sensation throughout our body yeah it's just difficult to build that kind of robot. It's expensive. You start talking about multi multi million dollars, yeah. and then people start asking you questions. Why did you invest all of this money? I want to see what moves they do. <laughs> Duh. Hello. It could be better investment.